Steve Goodman. Stephen Benjamin Goodman was an American folk music singer-songwriter from Chicago. He wrote the song City of New Orleans, which was recorded by Arlo Guthrie and many others including Joan Baez, John Denver and Judy Collins. In 1985, it received the Grammy Award for Best Country Song, as performed by Willie Nelson. Goodman had a small but dedicated group of fans for his albums and concerts during his lifetime, and is generally considered a musician's musician. His most frequently sung song is the Chicago Cubs anthem, Go, Cubs, Go. Goodman died of leukemia in September 1984. Born on Chicago's north side to a middle-class Jewish family, Goodman began writing and performing songs as a teenager, after his family had moved to thinier north suburbs. He graduated from Maine East High School in Park Ridge, Illinois, in 1965, where he was a classmate of Hillary Clinton. Before that, however, he began his public singing career by leading the junior choir at Temple Beth Israel in Albany Park. In the fall of 1965, he entered the University of Illinois and pledged the Sigma Alpha Mu fraternity, where he, Ron Banyan, and Steve Hartman formed a popular rock cover band, The Juicy Fruits. He left college after one year to pursue his musical career. In the early spring of 1967, Goodman went to New York, staying for a month in a Greenwich Village brownstone across the street from the Café Wa, where Goodman performed regularly during his brief stay there. Returning to Chicago, he intended to restart his education but he dropped out again to pursue his musical dream full-time after discovering the cause of his continuous fatigue was actually leukemia, the disease that was present during the entirety of his recording career. Until his death in 1984. In 1968, Goodman began performing at the Earl of Old Town in Chicago and attracted a following. By 1969, Goodman was a regular performer in Chicago, while attending Lake Forest College. During this time, Goodman supported himself by singing advertising jingles. In September 1969, he met Nancy Pruder, who was attending college while supporting herself as a waitress. They were married in February 1970. Though he experienced periods of remission, Goodman never felt that he was living on anything other than borrowed time, and some critics, listeners and friends have said that his music reflects this sentiment. His wife Nancy, writing in the liner notes to the posthumous collection No Big Surprise, characterized him this way. Basically, Steve was exactly who he appeared to be, an ambitious, well-adjusted man from a loving, middle-class Jewish home in the Chicago suburbs whose life and talent were directed by the physical pain and time constraints of a fatal disease which he kept at bay, at times, seemingly by willpower alone. Steve wanted to live as normal a life as possible, only he had to live it as fast as he could. He extracted meaning from the mundane. Goodman's songs first appeared on Gathering at the Earl of Old Town, an album produced by Chicago record company Dunwich in 1971. As a close friend of Earl Pyong, the owner of the folk music bar, Goodman performed at the Earl dozens of times, including customary New Year's Eve concerts. He also remained closely involved with Chicago's Old Town School of Folk Music, where he had met and mentored his good friend, John Prime. Later in 1971, Goodman was playing at a Chicago bar called The Quiet Night as the opening act for Chris Christopherson. Christopherson, impressed with Goodman, introduced him to Paul Anka, who brought Goodman to New York to record some demos. These resulted in Goodman signing a contract with Buddha Records. All this time, Goodman had been busy writing many of his most enduring songs, and this avid songwriting would lead to an important break for him. While at the quiet night, Goodman saw Arlo Guthrie and asked to sit in and play a song for him. Guthrie grudgingly agreed on the condition that Goodman buy him a beer first. Guthrie would then listen to Goodman for as long as it took Guthrie to drink the beer. Goodman played City of New Orleans, which Guthrie liked enough that he asked to record it. Guthrie's version of Goodman's song became a top 20 hit in 1972 and provided Goodman with enough financial and artistic success to make his music a full-time career. The song, about the Illinois central city of New Orleans train, would become an American standard, covered by such musicians as Johnny Cash, Judy Collins, Chet Atkins, Lynn Anderson, and Willie Nelson, whose recorded version earned Goodman a posthumous Grammy Award for Best Country Song in 1985. A French translation of the song, Salut les Amoureux, was recorded by Joe Dassin in 1973. A Dutch singer, Gerard Cox, heard the French version while on holiday and translated it into Dutch, titled T is where for B die Mouise Omer. 
It reached number one on the Dutch Top 40 in December 1973 and has become a classic which is still played on Dutch radio. A Hebrew version of the song Shalom Lacheretz Niederet was sung by famous Israeli singer Yehoram Gaon in 1977 and became an immediate hit. Lyrically, the French, Dutch, and Hebrew versions bear no resemblance to Goodman's original lyrics. According to Goodman, the song was inspired by a train trip he and his wife took from Chicago to Mattoon, Illinois. According to the liner notes on the Steve Goodman anthology No Big Surprise, City of New Orleans was written while on the campaign trail with Senator Edmund Muskie. In 1974, singer David Allen Co. achieved considerable success on the country charts with Goodman's and John Prine's You Never Even Called Me By My Name, a song which good-naturedly spoofed stereotypical country music lyrics. Prine refused to take a songwriter's credit for the song, although Goodman bought Prine a jukebox as a gift from his publishing royalties. Goodman's name is mentioned in Coe's recording of the song, in a spoken epilogue in which Goodman and Coe discuss the merits of the perfect country and western song. Goodman's success as a recording artist was more limited. Although he was known in folk circles as an excellent and influential songwriter, his albums received more critical than commercial success. One of Goodman's biggest hits was a song he didn't write, The Dutchman, written by Michael Peter Smith. He reached a wider audience as the opening act for Steve Martin while Martin was at the height of his stand-up popularity. During the mid and late 70s, Goodman became a regular guest on Easter Day on Vince Skelce's radio show in New York City. Skelce's personal recordings of these sessions eventually led to an album of selections from these appearances, the Easter Tapes. In 1977, Goodman performed on Tom Paxton's live album New Songs from the Briar Patch which contains some of Paxton's topical songs of the 1970s, including Talking Watergate and White Bones of Allende, as well as a song dedicated to Mississippi John Hurt entitled Did You Hear John Hurt? During the fall of 1979, Goodman was hired to write and perform a series of topical songs for national public radio. Although Goodman and Jethro Burns recorded 11 songs for the series, only five of them, The Ballad of Flight 191 about a plane crash, Daily's Gone, Unemployed, the 20th century is almost over, and the election year rag, were used on the air before the series was cancelled. Goodman wrote and performed many humorous songs about Chicago, including three about the Chicago Cubs, a dying Cub fan's last request, when the Cubs go marching in and go, Cubs, go. He wrote go, Cubs, go out of spite after then GM Dallas Green called a dying Cub fan's last request too depressing. The Cubs songs grew out of his fanatical devotion to the team which included many clubhouse and on-field visits with Cubs players. He wrote other songs about Chicago, including the Lincoln Park Pirates, about the notorious Lincoln Towing Service, and Daly's Gone, about Mayor Richard J. Daly. Another comic highlight is Vigimatic, about a man who falls asleep while watching late-night TV and dreams he ordered many products that he saw on infomercials. He could also write serious songs, most notably My Old Man, a tribute to Goodman's father, Bud Goodman a used car salesman and World War II veteran. Goodman won his second Grammy, for Best Contemporary Folk Album, in 1988 for Unfinished Business, a posthumous album on his Red Pajamas Records label. Many fans become aware of Goodman's work through other artists such as Jimmy Buffett. Buffett has recorded several of Goodman's songs, including Banana Republics, Door No. 3 and Woman Going Crazy on Caroline Street. On September 20, 1984, Goodman died of leukemia at the University of Washington Medical Center in Seattle, Washington. He had anointed himself with a tongue in cheek nickname Cool Hand Luke during his illness. He was 36. Four days after Goodman's death, the Chicago Cubs clinched the Eastern Division title in the National League for the first time ever, earning them their first postseason appearance since 1945, three years before Goodman's birth. Eight days later, on October 2, the Cubs played their first postseason game since F 1945 World Series. Goodman had been asked to sing the Star Spangled Banner before it, Jimmy Buffett filled in, and dedicated the song to Goodman. Today, the Chicago Cubs plays Go, Cubs, Go at the conclusion of every home game win, a song Goodman wrote for his beloved team. In April 1988, some of Goodman's ashes were scattered at Wrigley Field, the home of the Chicago Cubs. He was survived by his wife and three daughters. His eldest daughter, Jessie, died in 2012. In 2006, Goodman's daughter, Rosanna, issued My Old Man, an album of a variety of artists covering her father's songs. 
Interest in Goodman's career had a resurgence in 2007 with the publication of a biography by Clay Eels. The same year, the Chicago Cubs began playing Goodman's 1984 song Go, Cubs, Go after each home game win. When the Cubs made it to the playoffs, interest in the song and Goodman resulted in several newspaper articles about Goodman. Illinois Lieutenant Governor Pat Quinn declared October 5, 2007, Steve Goodman Day in the state. In 2010, Illinois Representative Mike Quigley introduced a bill renaming the Lakeview Post Office on Irving Park Road in honor of Goodman. The bill was signed by President Barack Obama on August 3, 2010. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.